today on Inside Entertainment TV. See why Cameron Diaz is so vengeful in her new film, The Other Woman. Eyeing beautiful lashes? You're in luck because we have all the tips. We color outside the lines for the new documentary, Yodorowsky's Doom. See why everyone's singing the praises of Somebody's Darling, plus so much more. From deep in the heart of Texas, this is Inside Entertainment TV. Welcome to another episode of Inside Entertainment TV here at Wild Bill's Western Store. I'm Bree Crum. And I'm Paul Southland. Cameron Diaz, Leslie Mann, and Kate Upton prove that revenge isn't just sweet, it's also very funny. These hot, hilarious women give girl power another meaning to comedy in The Other Woman. I got to sit down with the beautiful actresses as well as leading men Taylor Kinney and Nikolai Coster Waldau to get the inside look. This celebrity segment is brought to you by Cadillac. This is big. You haven't dated just one guy in a long time. You cleared the whole roster. I cleared the bench. The housekeeper called a pipe burst in the bathroom. So you're going to Connecticut now? I got to take a rain check. I'm looking for Mark. You must be his housekeeper. <laughs> no, I'm his wife, Kate. <gasps> Well, I wanted to uh, apologize, first of all, for uh, desecrating your poster. Oh, <laughs> look at that. You. You're you like fit a right in. And then, yeah, I fit right in in the binoculars. What do, you, oh, yeah. what do you see through those binoculars? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on the film. This is so much Thank fun to watch. And, and I know, like, watching the trailer, I thought, oh, it's going to be it's gonna be bad for the guys in there, but not all the guys are bad in this. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, and the Taylor guy, Kinney's a saint. He is a, a saint. Beautiful yeah. saint. Beautiful. <laughs> he is a good looking man. Yeah, <laughs> and the you know, and the bad guy in it is just a bad guy. He, yeah. We're not saying that all men are like that, or even all men who cheated are that bad at what yeah. they, you know, that bad. We're just saying that, you know, this guy has to be as bad as possible so that it's so much fun to watch him get what he deserves. Because, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if someone says it's a dude film, that's okay. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. All right, but, but it's a chick that like, dudes will like, too. Of course, okay. yeah. <laughs> Girls, hey, 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 listen, hey, what? Watch this. Look what I call thunder. Hey, boy, grab me a beer. I know there are so many special moments on the set. What do you suppose you'll always remember like, years from now when you're, when you're thinking about this film? Mm -hmm. um, my 21st birthday. Yeah. 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 That's they, a good they one. They threw a me one. a party. It was a party on set. It was a party after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're done. And a little dive bar in Quag. Mm -hmm. in the Hamptons. It was so much fun. It was so much yeah. fun. Well, well, thank you all so much thank for being you. with us. And, yeah, and um, I got to say, all the guys back at home are pretty jealous. It's a great room to be in oh. right now. Uh, congratulations on the film. I don't know if the term uh, chick flick is acceptable or not, but I don't know that it really applies because I think this is for guys as well, right? Yeah. You know, I agree. I think a you know a, a fun movie is a fun movie. I mean, I love The Heat and Bridesmaids, all women, and I, I, I laugh my ass off. I thought you were giving him hormones. I am. Not for a pre-op transsexual. I look like I need a bra. I think you're going through menopause. Menopause? Uh-huh. Is it? A little... Well, and this must have been so much fun to work on, too. It looks like you guys had a blast. Uh, working with the girls, they genuinely have an honest relationship and friendship, and it's not, you know, it's not the case always on, on a film or any other gig. And on this one, uh, you know, we'll be friends for life, and it was just the whole project itself was, uh, you know, something special. From Icon Centric, the DVDs out this week have a little something for everyone. Take off your shoes with Evan Rachel Wood in Barefoot. Take a look into the life of a pinup model and Betty Page reveals all. And get some culture in the Israeli film Big Bad Wolves. And for a throwback, we're going back to my interview with Kevin Hart and Ice Cube stars of Ride Along, out now on DVD. You wouldn't last one day out here. I'm the law. Be afraid.
can't drive it now. Well, congratulations on the film. We're so happy to see you here in Dallas for the ride along. And uh, you guys had some interesting experience here. You get to learn to line dance, you yes, cowboy hats, cowboy yes, boots. A little different, right? A little yeah, bit, yeah. a little bit. I mean, you know, I like my boots. I you love like the my boots? boots. What were they called? Boots. Cowboy boots. What, what kind of cowboy boots? Well, you guys look like you, you have a great rapport and you've had a lot of fun on this tour, but you, you had a lot of fun making this movie. Do you think there's a moment that you'll always remember from the set, something that'll stick out years from now when people ask you about he this movie? He has lots of memory, lots of memorable moments, because I think I gave you a lot of memorable moments. <laughs> yeah, he gave me a lot of memorable moments. I love going home from the set every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just the most, you know, uh, Elation I felt, you know. Basically what he's Kevin saying Moon. is the whole movie was nothing but memorable. You know, don't tell uh, me what I'm saying. That's what that. you were saying. You just didn't you just didn't you didn't want to say it. No I words in my mouth. I'm not putting words in my mouth. This is the a, best movie of the year. I was gonna say you said that. I was gonna huh? say that that's what you was gonna say and then you said it. Well congratulations to both of you and uh congrats on the film. Thank Thank you. See you next time. Thank, Thank you. you man. Thank you. Don't go anywhere. We're stepping into the kitchen to make a delicious meal right after this break. You miss me? I miss all of y'all. The world has changed. Tastes have changed. Maybe luxury vacations could use an update as well. That's modern luxury. Celebrity cruises. If you want your eyes to look beautiful without the hassle of mascara, then watch our next segment. I was in LA to get all the tips on beautiful lashes. This segment is brought to you by Bockendorf's. I am here with the beautiful Felicia Fricassi, and you are the owner of Fricassi Lashes. Yes. You are gorgeous. Thank you, sir. You your lashes are beautiful. Thank and you. so tell me about your product and what you do. Just you're an expert in your field. Yes. Brows and lashes are the frame of the face. It's the first thing that you see, you know, when you look at someone. So in the back in 2009, I opened up my company. I opened up a lash parlor and brow parlor where ladies just come in. They get their lashes done, they get their brows done, they're in and out, and they look great for the whole week or the weekend. What's nice about the lashes is that when you come into our store, we're gonna look at the frame of your face. We want something that's gonna look natural on you. A lot of times we see ladies that do too much where they're doing too many lashes, they're too long, they're too thick. We want to make these look natural and undetectable to the human eye. So that's why we're gonna start by you know, using a short lash, blending them with a medium to a long, giving a nice little cat soup on the end. Mm -hmm. So it looks nice so when you're talking to someone you just Looking right into it. Exactly, it's really yeah. flirty and trendy. <laughs> well, let's get started. Do you want to do some on me? The first thing we're going to do is just, again, brush up the brow. There's all this excess hair, as you did tell me. You just want to mm -hmm. trim a little bit of it. And I do see where you have over tweeze a little bit, right in the beginning area. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is going to give you a little powder. Okay. And we're just going to apply under so it's undetectable. for being here and doing this Thank and you for me. we have to get together again yes. for sure so beautiful. good luck with everything and your lashes, I, I love my lashes from beautiful eyelashes to beautiful food we sat down with an LA chef to taste some yummy cuisine sure to please any palate this segment is brought to you by lifestyle vs los cabos I'm here with this cutie patootie chef 
Chef Mariko in LA, celebrity <laughs> chef to the stars, and we're in her kitchen, which is so special. So thank you for having us. Thank you so much for joining this me today. This is lovely. I know, great way to start our day. Okay, so what are you showing us? What are we cooking today? Today I'm gonna show you how to make one of my easy chocolate souffles. It's really fast and easy, and it's really popular amongst my celebrity clients because they always want something that's really indulgent, but they wanna keep it healthy and you know gluten-free and all that. So this right. is really fun. Okay. easy recipe. Okay, so let's get to it. Tell us what to do. Okay, so first I'm gonna put a couple eggs in a mixer and just the egg whites. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, and now I'm just gonna get them, beat them up so they're nice and stiff. Okay. So tell me a little bit about your background. How did you become a chef? Well, I've been cooking ever since I was a little girl and you know, it's just one of those things that was always kind of my passion. I went to business school, I was working on my PhD in finance, and I would always procrastinate by cooking. And a couple years ago, I just decided to do it full time, and I'm here today. Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, uh, it looks like the egg whites are all nice and fluffy. So then, in the souffles today, I'm just gonna add a mashed up banana, and it's gonna kind of give it the sweetness. Um, that you want in souffle without adding, you know, extra sugar. Okay. And then I love, love, love chocolate. So I'm just gonna add a few of those in there. And then some nuts. These are just some like little honey roasted almond slivers. Oh, yummy. And then dry cherries. Do you like yeah. cherries? Oh, yeah. Mm, okay. Delish. And I'm just gonna mix that up for a second. The thing with souffles is you can make it ahead of time and actually put them in the ramekins. So if you're having a party, you can just like have them in the fridge ready to go. Uh -huh. And then, you know, 10, like 10 minutes before it's time for dessert, you can pull them out and put them in the oven. Okay. Okay, so how, how long do we bake it for? Probably about like 10 to 12 minutes okay. until it's like golden brown. Okay. And it's at 375 degrees right now. Are they ready? It smells so good in here that I think I think they are. They are. Yeah, as soon as they start to get golden brown, it's been about like 10 to 12 minutes, but you'll just want to check them because every oven's a little bit different. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> Those are so delicious. Thank you. Oh my goodness. And it's so healthy. You could pretty much eat this for breakfast, actually. No, absolutely. I love the taste of the cherry with the banana. I mean, that's my favorite. I haven't tried the chocolate yet, but that is so delicious and yummy. Thank, Thank you, you for being with us this morning. Thank we really you so much for having it. me. And when we're back in LA, we'll hit you up. Yes, and I cannot wait to hit <laughs> you up when I'm in Texas. Definitely have to, for okay. sure. Stay tuned for a look at the colorful world of Yodorowsky's Dune. Pamper this special man in your life with a gift card from the Boardroom Salon for Men. Give the gift of confidence, the Boardroom Salon for Men. The world has changed. Tastes have changed. Maybe luxury vacations could use an update as well. That's modern luxury. Celebrity cruises. You miss me? I miss all of y'all. Thank you.
The new documentary, Jodorowsky's Dune, takes a look inside the mind of the legendary filmmaker Alejandro Jodorowsky in his attempt to make a film version of the sci-fi classic book. Documentary director Frank Pavich takes us inside the mind of the visionary filmmaker. This segment is brought to you by Sky House. Well, congratulations on this film. We saw it at Fantastic Fest and it was uh, oh, absolutely amazing. And, uh, and you know, we kind of went in sight unseen and I know that, that a lot of people are really surprised about what exactly this is. Jodorowsky's Dune is the story of Alejandro Jodorowsky, who is um, probably best known for being uh, the director of a series of cult films from the 1970s. He's the creator of the first midnight movie. So he was going to do a big budget pre-Star Wars um, science fiction film. They did all the work, all the preparation, drew every image out, every scene, from the first to the last, every camera movement, everything, and then the project collapsed. My ambition was tremendous. I wanted to make something sacred, a film that gave the hallucinations of LSD. If I took LSD to change the young mind, of all the world. Michel Seduc said to me, I want to make a new picture with you. What do you want to do? I say, Dune. Yeah, and, and he seems uh, actually pretty much at peace that, that it, that it uh, didn't get made. And, and I think this is such an interesting story about the, the greatest film never made. But for you, like uh, you have to sense some sort of frustration about this. If his film was completed, um, I never would have gotten to make this film, and I never would have gotten to meet him, but I would have loved to have seen his film, for sure. Um, but he, it's really interesting, because how many people can you speak about that spent so many years working on a project only for it to collapse and for it not to happen, but to be uplifted by it? You know, he's not bitter about it, he's not upset, he doesn't feel that you know, people stole his ideas. In the film he says he wanted to change the world, and, uh, and I think he did. For me, it was not to make a picture. It was something deeper. I wanted to make something sacred, free, with new perspective, open the mind. But congratulations again on the film. We're so happy to, to see it and see it get out there to the world. And, uh, and we're looking forward to seeing what you have next. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. From Men Who Cheat to Police on the Street, these are the new films out in theaters this week. Cameron Diaz, Leslie Mann, and Kate Upton prove that cheaters never win in The Other Woman. A police officer goes undercover to fight crime in Paul Walker's last film, Brick Mansions. Get ready to play mind games in the 70s psychological thriller, The Quiet Ones. Drive as fast as you can to the British thriller, Lock, starring Tom Hardy. These are the albums out this week, and they're sure to be on heavy rotation. The Pixies are back with their first album in more than 23 years, Indie Cindy. Go back to the beginning with Maria Minerva's new album, Histronic. Let your southern side get you into a little trouble with the new album from the Howlin' Brothers. Walk on the odd side with Y Oak's folk pop fusion album, Shriek. Coming up next, we catch up with the band Somebody's Darling. You miss me? I miss all of y'all. Mm. Pamper this special man in your life with a gift card from the Boardroom Salon for Men. Give the gift of confidence, the Boardroom Salon for Men. Sometimes being able to help someone is as easy as doing 22 push-ups. 
The charity organization Honor Courage Commitment has promised to give $100 for any person that can do 22 push-ups in honor of the soldiers who have come home. That's right. Can you do it? I don't know. Want to raise some money? Let's try it. Uh, let's do it. Woo! Every day, men and women of the military face their own battle when they return home. Last year, we lost more soldiers as a result of PTSD than in combat overseas. Honor Courage Commitment and the Hirsch Foundation are fighting to change these staggering statistics. This is why the 22 Kill Push-Up Challenge was created. For every 22 push-ups you record and send in, the Hirsch Foundation will donate $100 to Honor Courage Commitment. Why 22? Because every day there are 22 soldiers that take their own lives as a result of PTSD. Honor Courage Commitment helps returning soldiers transition into daily life. They help by providing job placement, health services, as well as leadership and business training. Celebrities from all over the country are supporting this amazing cause. D.L. Hughley, Casey Musgraves, Matt Dallas, and Curtis Granderson are all advocates of HCC. All you have to do is donate a minute of your time and a few drops of sweat. When you wake up sore the next day, just remember, it's all for a good cause. The Blues Rock Band, Somebody's Darling, avoided their sophomore slump with the release of Jank City Shakedown in 2012. Last week, we rocked out with the band at the Granada Theater. This week, we get to know the band and see why their sound has been so successful. We're here at Sundown in Granada with Amber from Somebody's Darling, one of our favorite bands in Dallas. And you guys have been all over the place, but there's something still so cool about Dallas. Not that, not that it's just home, but that it's a, it's a great place to be and it's a cool scene, right? Oh, it's a great scene. And I think they're trying to build a local music scene here because I think it gets a bad rap, you know? You have Austin and Nashville and these places that are always credited for the music scene. And Dallas is like, I feel like becoming one of those scenes. And one cool thing about the dynamic of the band is you have a band house that you guys are based out of. That's got to be an interesting dynamic to, to live and work together so closely. Yeah, we, uh, we practice. Some of us live out of there. Uh, the album uh, title for this upcoming album might be called Adult Roommates. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of that, I know that you, uh, people love your two albums and they're looking forward to this third one. So when can we expect it? You know. We have it in our hands. It's like a little baby dinosaur egg. <laughs> and uh, once we get all like the business and uh, technical stuff taken care of, hopefully within the next few months we'll have it. Oh good, have it but out. it's done. Yeah, it's done. Good, it good. is done. Good, and how is this one going to be different from the other two? I think it's more rock and roll, which is what we always wanted to be, which is like our heart and soul yeah. rock and roll. And we just try different things. It's going to be different. It's going to be unique, inventive, like yeah. I think this, I, I hope this is our album that, that really breaks us and pushes us through to the, to the next level. Well, one, one of the things that I was curious about is, is a lot of people, I hear a lot of comparisons to Janis Joplin, but who was kind of your musical hero growing up? Gosh, growing up, I mean, we, we live in Texas, yeah. all country music, yeah. obviously like the Garth Brooks, yep. all that stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I've always been, it's kind of different, I listen to a lot of male musicians and so I've always had that like encouragement there and so I think like the Jim James banging his head of my morning jacket and like Ryan Adams songwriting and uh, you know just like that energy and power I love that and I get my inspiration from that you know. So uh, what else can we look forward to coming up besides the new album? Once the new album sure. comes out we'll start touring again we're gonna have new merchandise a new CD hopefully vinyl um, and just hopefully start playing with big bands like Jeff yeah. Bridges and go on tour and we're gonna try to get to Europe soon and see what happens there. Good, oh, that's really exciting. Now where can people find out more about your music? Uh, somebody'sdarling.com mm -hmm. and um, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that Everywhere. stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Perfect. just somebody's darling, yeah. So awesome. Well well congratulations and Thank we're you. looking forward to seeing you tonight and uh, all the other shows coming. I think you have three links coming up as well, right? Yeah, uh huh. We're opening uh, for a band from Fort Worth for their CD release show, so it's gonna be great. Come out and see it. Coming up next, we preview two of the hottest music festivals coming to Texas. Got it, lost it, got it, 
spent it, got it now. I'm back to ballin', 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 ballin'. The world has changed. Tastes have changed. Maybe luxury vacations could use an update as well. That's modern luxury. Celebrity cruises. You miss me? I miss all of y'all. Watch out Coachella, we're bringing you a preview of Suburbia and Edge Fest. Both festivals are bringing some of the biggest musical artists to town. David Guetta, Tegan and Sarah, and J. Cole are all loading up their tour buses and heading to the suburbs for the Suburbia Music Festival in Plano. While this is a first time festival, if the lineup is any indication, this one's going to be a lot of fun. One of the biggest music festivals is starting right here in Dallas, the suburbs of Dallas to be exact. Suburbia is coming to Plano, Texas, and some of the hottest acts right now are making the trip. David Guetta, Tegan and Sarah, J. Cole, Alabama Shakes, Big Gigantic, and Violent Femmes are just some of the artists performing. This event is modeling itself after Coachella and Bonnaroo. It's planning to be an experience, not just a concert. Literally, this event is groundbreaking for the DFW area. They are building two stages and accommodations at Oak Point Park and Nature Preserve. The two-day festival will host a full-service bar, VIP lounges, and plenty of good food. Suburbia will be on May 3rd and 4th. Go to SuburbiaMusicFest.com for tickets and more information. Well, that looks so exciting. I cannot wait to rock out to the band next weekend, and we're going to be there. That's right, and Edge Fest comes back for its 24th year, and this year, Beck, Group Love, and Cage the Elephant all bring their unique brand of rock to the festival, and we caught up with Jagger from 102 One The Edge to find out why this is one festival you don't want to miss. Edge Fest 24, coming up at Toyota Stadium in Frisco. I'm Jagger from 102 One The Edge. I do the morning show there. And I started doing Edge Fest back in 1998. That was my first one. In fact, I had to go back and look up to see what the bands were because after you do enough of these, it all starts to blur together. You get some of these smaller bands that you see on the bill and then years later you're going, wow, they played Edge Fest? Like Pearl Jam did in 1992. So this year, big lineup, including Beck, who goes back to the 90s, uh, gonna be on stage. He's got a brand new album out and then it'll be definitely something to check out. Also the Avid Brothers, which draw huge fans from all over the country. Kind of like the, when I talked to Steve Avitz, he referred to themselves kind of like the uh, Grateful Dead of a modern era. Uh, some of the bands that are coming out of Coachella, Cage the Elephant, just playing there. Also, uh, New Politics and Bastille, one of my favorite bands that I'm looking forward to. So those are some of the kind of things that you get to see at Edgefest uh, when you're backstage. The main thing that you want to see, of course, takes place on stage. And if you'd like to see and find out who's going to be there and get the complete lineup and possibly tickets, you can go to kdge.com and we'll see you at EdgeFest, April 26th, Toyota Stadium. Well, that was an exclusive tour of music, television, and film. Thank you for joining us. Until next week, be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And next week, we sit down with the director of Don Hemingway. That's right, writer-director Richard Shepard joins us. Here's a sneak peek at that interview. I love British gangster movies. They're sort of in my cinematic DNA, whether it's Sexy Beast or The Hit or The Limey or Mona Lisa. And these movies sort of have always been part of my movie going love, really. And I wanted to write one, but do it in a different way. To do a crime movie in which there's not really a crime. To do a character study, really, of a character who might have been the second or third lead of one movie and make him the lead of this movie and follow him through his entire journey. Yeah, well, and the character's a whole lot of fun. I know he's a snarling, sexy beast. Like, where did the inspiration for that kind of character come from? I don't know, I just, I just, I like, I wanted someone who was unfiltered, who was not gonna censor himself, but whose worst enemy was himself. Earlier, Somebody's Darling talked about their awesome concert when they opened up for Academy Award winning actor, Jeff Bridges. 
Enjoy this performance from the dude himself and his band, The Abiders. We'll see you next week. I'm on